Press Commission who came from Toronto. Elizabeth was with us for 10 years. I invite you to please keep in mind in my talk two questions that are implicit in the title that announced this lecture. First, what happened to a society that is confronted in its historical and ethical truths by a group with public and institutional authority? And also, what happens with the group of truth seekers who challenge this society with findings related to years of political violence and war? And also, let me start for a short introduction. First, our mission has just begun. The final report of the Colombian Truth Commission must be understood as a takeoff platform. The preparation task is over. We are no longer a state institution, but the road ahead is immense with many new tasks. We must deepen what we have clarified in our research, expanded, incorporate missing data, correct eventual errors, and look for better explanations. Second, the fear of the truth. Many people in Colombia think that it would be better to forget what happened in the armed conflict. This whole part has Remember, it would destroy the possibility of building the future. Institutions are afraid of losing legitimacy once the crimes of their members are revealed. The fear of the politicians was the strongest because they feel truth can threaten their popularity and destroy their image. Fear finally takes hold of all those who deny the facts. According to them, massacres never happened. Women were not abused, and there were no disappearances and displacements in Colombia. Just as in the case of Germany, there are groups of people who deny the Holocaust. And in the case of Argentina, Brazil, and Chile, there are those who say that nobody was disappeared. Third, the resistance to compassion. In addition to the fear of the truth, the Commission found a widespread lack of emotions and compassion in the face of all the suffering and devastation found in the people and communities. Sometimes the truth cannot be denied because it's extremely brutal or distressing. For example, when reason to children crying or desperate mothers or even confused perpetrators. Nevertheless, much of the society of the society asked us if they were anesthetized and felt no pain. One knows what happened and is happening, but you cannot allow the corresponding emotions to emerge. In the end, you are not good. Instead, you rationalize your conduct, thinking that you are too busy with really important things, such as a contextual theological discussion or a political party dispute on candidates or some sort of business negotiation. Thankfully, it's a real thing for millions of human beings who you seem to belong to a different kind of people who don't care about realities. And if there is no vulnerability in the face of suffering, how can a human ethic be constructed? First, standing side by side with the victims. We have learned that authenticity in the search for human truth is only present when there is a daily communion with human suffering. Amongst the wounded neighbors in Colombia, there are around 7,000 killed and 9 million survivors. 
you are in contact with many of them. Instead of abandoning them, it is the time to put our service completely to the side. And this not only happens in Colombia. You can find the wood in Redwood due to human cause everywhere, every day, and in any road you take. Would you be compared to the lives in Spain and the way they suffer? You cross a line and enter a path that has no way back. The first part, the external impact of the Truth Commission. When the Truth Commission was established in 2018, Colombia society, with important exceptions, had very little interest in finding the truth about the country and the history of the humanitarian cycle of the country. The opposition had won a referendum opposing the peace agreement. But even when the Congress accepted that most of the claims were introduced, they continued to say that the Truth Commission and other institutions created by the peace agreement were not legitimate. They also won the presidential election. And the peace process lost the extra support given by former President Juan Manuel Santos, Nobel Peace Prize for eight. In front of this situation, the Truth Commission decided to carry out a national educational mobilization. This, to discuss the reality of the victims and the right they have to know the truth. This initiative was called Social Dialogue. It was developed in the spite of the COVID. There's thousands of conversations and educational programs in social networks and television, in radio stations and in newspapers. Every day, during 40 months, somewhere in Colombia, a social dialogue event took place. Event also took place in 24 countries where Colombia is living in asylum due to the conflict. The social dialogue was as crucial as the final report. The mobilization brought with it a change in the attitude of the society towards the truth of the country. Despite the opposition of the government and the difficulties of public meeting with the COVID pandemic, Colombian society moved from resistance and fear to the truth to a growing interest, even passion, to understand and accept reality. Thousands came to the Jewish Commission to bring their testimonies. Many provided written memories and analysis. Colombia was able to listen to members of the guerrilla, paramilitary and the military, sharing facts about the horrific levels of violence. The country met crowds of women searching for their missing children. Peasant dispossessed of freedom of hectares of land, soldiers without legs, blind for their dreams. Many Colombians understood that achievements, achievements in economic development, organization of political part, parties and state institutions have been built on the basis of immense and prolonged human suffering of millions of victims. Many people accepted for the first time the death of the human tragedy and increasingly felt that continuing like this was intolerable. The result of these years of mobilization was a general acceptance from different political and social points of view that change was necessary. In the first round, for the presidential election in May, in May 2022, Colombia discarded the candidates of the traditional parties and clearly expressed their hope and will for a profound change when they chose in the final vote two candidates that were committed to a radical change, 
Rodolfo Hernández, who promised change by ending corruption, and Gustavo Petro, who promised change by achieving total peace. Petro won. The Truth Commission did not campaign for any candidate, but it is obvious that the mobilization for the truth and the national awareness of the need for a change to stop the humanitarian tragedy were determinants in the election of the new president. On June 28, 2022, the Commission delivered its final report to the country. President elect Gustavo Petro received from my own hands the book of the Commission's conclusions and recommendations. Petro promised to study the document. 40 days later, in, this, in his inauguration speech as president of Colombia, he repeated twice in front of the national and international community, I will implement all the recommendations for the Truth Commission by letter. Petro has never before spoken with the Commission, but by committing himself to change that this peace, he found in the Commission's recommendation clear priorities to focus his program. The government has excelled in the implementation of the following recommendations. One, the Commission recommended the great, the great peace that calls for reconciliation among all Colombians who, without being at war, are nevertheless divided by hatred and distrust. In addition, the Commission requested that negotiations with the remaining armed political groups and the submission to justice of drug traffickers should take place. Petro called for total peace, which means dialogue with all who are political groups and talks to bring drug traffickers to justice. He immediately restarted negotiations with the National Liberation Army, the ELN, which had been suspended by the previous government, and he established a relation with Venezuela and Cuba, and Cuba, very important countries to move ahead in the peace process in Colombia. Two, changing the security system was identified by the Truth Commission as one of the most important recommendations. <coughs> The new defense minister, a courageous defender of human rights and investigator of paramilitary crimes, stands as proof that the changes are taking place. 50 high ranking military officers have been removed from the institution due to accusations of human rights violations. And the project of the presidency to change the military doctrine is underway. Third, the Commission recommended the inclusion of indigenous people and Afro-Colombian communities who have suffered from the racism and the destruction of their culture and spiritual traditions. President Pedro appointed that Vice President Francia Marquez, the leader who once walked 400 kilometers in two weeks women Afro-Colombian companions to demand that the state should destroy the gold mining machines that were destroying their rivers. Today, Colombia's ambassador to Washington is an Afro-Colombian. The ambassador to the United States is an, sorry, to the United Nations is an indigenous woman, and the Minister of Education is an Afro-Colombian woman. The Commission recommended economic planning based on the participation of citizens and grassroots organizations in the territories in order to increase democracy to overcome inequality between regions and guarantee food, education, shelter, health, care for nature, and industrial development. The new development plan has been made with the involvement of the territories. Five. The Commission recommended transforming the war against the small cocaine coca growers into alternative development programs. 
the president is doing his goal. He's doing his goal. And today, the peasant coca fields are not only, are only destroyed once different crops are in production. The Commission also called for a comprehensive solution incorporating education, employment, and public health to prevent the consumption of drugs and to prevent the involvement by young people in drug trafficking. The Commission also recommended legal prosecution against cartel leaders and their allies, and in the long term, proposed the regulation of the markets of production and consumption of cocaine. The new government is working in that direction. Since the Commission recommended that form in education to make children and young people aware of history and call for the ethical formation of students centered on equal human dignity and respect for nature and the habit of openness to vulnerability and reconciliation. The Ministry of Education has turned the Truth Commission report into a pedagogic test for all public schools in Colombia. As I said before, President Petro took seriously the recommendation of the Colombian Truth Commission. He has also made other significant changes, such as task reform to raise the state resources and correct inequality, measures to transition Colombia to other forms of energy, and prepare the country to replace oil and coal exports with other export commodities. It was expected that the nation would unite around the new president during this time of change. But this had not been the case. The country is divided. And let me make a particular consideration. We must look at the moment as a period in which Colombia is trying to move forward in deep, deep transformation that we are taking in the past. Dialogue and negotiation are very important. This is the time to stress the importance of participatory and fair democracy and create confidence in those who want to continue to invest in Colombia. Critics consider that the president generates populist expectations, which can lead to a crisis like Peru and Chile. But Colombia has shown that it has great institutional stability. Constructive public discussion on how Peru converts is beneficial as long as the president listens. The country was a leader who pushed forward to the horizons, who called for agreements able to hold the nation together while considering the inclusion of all relevant social groups according to different features. These are necessary conditions to the change to be possible and viable. We now see significant interest in discussing the final report and the commission recommendation in social and academic organizations. However, there are people and institutions that require a special approach when it comes to move ahead with the profound changes that the commission has been demanding. I am referring to the big, big business people, the guerrillas, the military, the main political parties the international community and the Catholic Church. Business people hope that the Commission will show that big companies cannot be involved in the conflict. We explain the CEOs that the Commission will not against them and we may visible the kidnappings, extortions and deaths suffered by them in the conflict. But after hearing from victims Victims and members of the companies, we also found that some companies financed the paramilitaries to displace peasants 
and they could reorganize the territories so that the companies could develop agro-industrial and mining projects that severely affected communities and nature. Big entrepreneurs of the state expected that the Commission would not question the economic system, but in exploring the causes of human suffering, the Commission found that the exclusion and inequity of capitalism in Colombia was one of the causes of violent conflict. Colombia has a moderate and stable economic, economic growth, but the concentration of land and wealth makes the country one of the most unequal of the planet. The drivers of the economic model, the state, the large production and service company and the banks opted to maintain the situation with the support of military forces and private security organizations. <coughs> the result of the development of an irrational model in which millions are left out of the productive process and seek employment in illegal activities. Verbal government has made a brilliant contribution to overcoming this irrationality. This economic essay in circulation analysis, which is not excuse enough at Boston College, offers, in my view, a straightforward route for a country like Colombia. We have been able to start proving this in 15 years in a demo program in the Magdalena Mundo region, a territory the same the size of Massachusetts. <laughs> when we started the program, there were two separate markets. In one sector, the production of capital goods and oil. In oil, mining, energy, and agroindustry. In the other sector, the production of goods and services for family life. They are very profit and very good inputs in the capital group sector and a lot of poverty in the family and community sector. Following the other one, we propose a market economy aimed to incorporate the entire population in the production of the standard community, which the villagers call the life we want to live. The model tried to unite the production of industrial goods and export commodities with the final goods and services that they have been considered for the law of life. To make it, to make it, state and entrepreneurs were invited to participate continually in a redistributive operation to ensure that in the moments of high savings. An industrial accumulation a significant invested is somewhere to peasant production, ethnic economies, and middle class enterprises, and startup popular firms. These enterprises of final goods and services give employment to the urban, popular, and rural inhabitants instead of leaving a significant group of the society out of the process of production and effective. Demand. The process is dynamic forward, investing in, investing in a number of creation activities besides the production of final material goods, such as, such as culture, art, sport, and spirituality, <coughs> and made, that made the life fuller and more beautiful. And the process is dynamic backwards. backwards and it is to invest in environmental conservation, protecting the planet, education, research of technology, health, and infrastructure, as infrastructure elements that activate the two sectors. Unfortunately, the big business people and the state do not dare to move in this direction because they lack, they lack knowledge and because they do not trust in the people. That is why they, they, they exclude half of Colombia, Colombian population, creative and intelligent. This exclusion produced in 2021 general process of young people, which has stopped 600 municipalities in the country. 
for the first time that you will conceive the possibility of changing the development model in this direction. And to do so, rather of reduction entrepreneurs will be determined. The final reasons expected the Commission to declare that the guerrilla war was objectively just and that they were victims of the state. We explain to the FARC agreements that the Commission was not making a narrative to show that they were victims, nor to attack them, but to explain the tragedy of the war and to establish the responsibility of all sides and to strengthen the peace process that they had signed with the government. The Commission found and revealed the war, the war crimes and crimes against humanity is the guerrilla committee. The Commission showed it was a mistake for the guerrillas to believe that the war would hold social and political injustice. Instead of solving the problems, the war made them bigger and increased hopelessness. The war damaged everything it touched. Including the actors of the war, the rulers and the military, all of them immensely, immensely affected. Today, in the face of the conflict of 60 years that still remain, women, children, peasants, and enemy groups keep shouting, stop the war, stopping on all sides, stopping now. The past of the war, the way in the college of the brain democracy that confronted truth unconditionally and seek in dialogue the changes that truth demands. The military, and there are very good people also among the military. The military considered that only, that only what they said about themselves could be true. They expected the final report to demonstrate that they were the good guys and that the guerrillas and the social protest leaders were the bad guys. But the Commission was not instituted to find out who were the good and who were the bad. The Commission was to receive victims from all sides and explain the human tragedy of the conflict. In doing so, the Commission found ethical, historical, and political responsibilities on all sides. I had the, the obligation to publicize these responsibilities. One day, the general, the general staff of the armed forces gave us a presentation on the military power of, of Colombia, the largest, best equipped, best trained on the continent after the United States, even equipped and trained by the United States. One of the great commanders asked me, what do you see on this marble? My answer was, how is possible that having such a security apparatus, we have several million victims? The commander reacted and said, it is your fault because you did not let us win the war. I answered, no, Admiral. The problem was you who did not let us make peace. The Commission knows that every additional year of war means tens of thousands killed in combat and millions of civilians victims. And we know that there are serious responsibilities of governments and political groups that lead the military and people to war. This is true for Colombia and for the whole world. The Commission understood the need for a profound change in the military institution after uncovering the truth of the false positives. It happens when the commanders present as positive result of combat the killing of thousands of completely innocent young people from poor families. The morally corrupt soldiers murdered them and presented their bodies as if they were killed in combat, in an example typical of body calm behavior from the Vietnam War. For the evidence of the need for a moral change in the security system, 
where there may be brutal violent actions in which the army and police supported the paramilitary drug traffickers. A change in the security system means a cultural transformation in the ethics, training, and doctrines of soldiers, policemen, and intelligence institutions, as well as a change in society. The change calls for the army and the police to be leaders in building trust at the service, at the service of the greatest of peace. Commission 6 desacralize the heroes of war, their majesty and their might. The army and the police are not sacred, but these saviors are the people in our room in the nation. We praise the heroes of the army because they offer their lives in wars for our security. But who is making these wars? Clarification of the truth has passed to understand the interest behind the wars. Interests that, interest that take advantage of the desire for justice and defend the homeland. Why in Colombia were thousands of young peasants made to die in the useless war? Why did thousands of young Americans have to die in Vietnam, Iraq, and Afghanistan? And today in Ukraine, apart from Putin's invasive crime, what are the interests of other nations push the Ukrainian youth to die in an all or nothing world? Presidents and politicians expected the Commission to show the achievements they had accomplished during their terms in office. The Commission did not forget those, but it had to explain like, why, why, under the last six presidents and members of parliament, Colombia had more than 7 million victims. That is why we ask each president, why did you stop the human trial during your term of presidency? The Commission has the responsibility to contribute to the collective construction of the greatest possible political democracy. It asks for the participants a dialogue capable to share the value of their contribution and also the failures and crimes from all sides. It demands kindness and humility. The construction is possible if the leader recognizes that we are vulnerable, vulnerable beings and, the, and that we make mistakes and we have to be together in calm accountability. The international community. The ambassador and the United Nations gave significant support to the peace process between the Colombian state and the FARC. They were at the side of the Truth Commission to provide political and economic support. Ambassadors were present even in remote regions of Colombia accompanying the communities. After sharing in our mission today, we would like to make this observation. The presence of the international community is imperative in the process of internal conflict of between two nations. Colombia is an example. Countries with different positions, such as the United States and Cuba, play an important role in the peace process between the Colombian state and the FARC region. Thanks to the European Union and Latin American countries, the threat of an armed conflict between Colombia and Venezuela ended. This shows the relevance of the participation of other countries in building trust and opening dialogue between two opponents. And it can be a lesson for the countries, for countries such as the one in Ukraine. 
The clarification of the truth is very important to solve an internal or international conflict. However, there is a lot of resistance to the truth. In Spain, for example, there is fierce opposition to the search of the truth during the Civil War and during the Franco government. France has been unwilling to uncover the truth about the conflict in Algeria. Northern Ireland agrees that establishing a truce commission will have facilitated peace, but it was not feasible to do so. There have been about 30 truce commissions in the world since the Argentinian Commission in the year 1983. The Commission has a goal towards clarifying the historical truth and the ethical ethical and political responsibilities and have less technical responsibilities to the national and international courts because it has been clear that legal truths, the truths of judges alone does not lead to pacific coexistence. From this price the initiative of an international truths commission with moral authority, credible and permanent that establishes historical, political, and ethical clarification and also presents viable recommendations for peace and world coexistence. Not a new international tribunal, but a truce commission independent of governments, armies, and political parties. The history of the Catholic Church in Colombia is a history of sinners and saints of compassion and confusion with power, clearly and maybe quite active in the violence between political parties last century, when conservative Catholics fought against liberal and socialist Catholics. After 1960, during the war between the state and the communists, members of the church, messengers of peace, at the site of human suffering has been assassinated. Young people, women, and laymen, as well as nuns, priests, and bishops. Many expected the Truth Commission to write the church defense during this complex history, but the Commission was not made to defend any sector. But to get the heart of the human tragedy, accompanying the victim and explaining. Why? One issue that is explained is why the war has been between Catholics who hated each other to death, and why the evangelization did not prevent the other conflict, and why moral education in a total Catholic nation did not teach compassion for suffering, openness, and mature love. The Truth Commission showed the good done by the church and also the violence produced by the Catholic believers. The church, represented by the bishop, has been unwilling until today to acknowledge its contribution to the violence and ask for forgiveness. It must do so because the church is the main, the main public moral authority in the country and if the church recognizes and ask forgiveness, it will open the way for the political parties, the industrial companies, the military intellectuals to recognize and ask for, the, for forgiveness and to change. Now I go to the second part, the internal impact of the Truth Commission. With the commissioners, five women and six men chosen by the independent selection committee of December 2017, we came from different cultural, spiritual, ethnic, and academic backgrounds. However, we were not representative of many group, but representative of the Colombian people. I was appointed president of the commission by the selection committee. 
It was my responsibility to defend the autonomy of the Commission. In protecting our autonomy, there arose internal tensions. The most difficult situation happened when the Commissioner who was the former, a former major of the Army wanted to subordinate us to the military forces. Two months before the end, he resigned and joined the extreme political right in attacking the Commission. I was aware of the extraordinary but extraordinary value of the Commission members and also our limitations. Several times I received suggestions from outside to create a parallel group different from the Commission to produce the final document that I would sign as president. I never accepted it. The Commission and group was the one chosen by the selection committee and the change was with the group to accomplish the mission, the challenge, but the group with the group to accomplish the mission, and we made it. Together we established the method of searching for the truth, which I presented to you in my first lecture that November. That method was focused on searching for the best intelligent explanation until we found the best answers to the question posed by the data. When reality imposes itself and demands affirmation or negation. And after the process of discernment, to seek and formulate recommendations consistent with the truth found to stop the humanitarian crisis. To seek the truth from the test of the human drama requires total detachment from any interest that becomes obstacle in the past toward the making. Reality. Because if you have to protect anything material or spiritual, you do not have the freedom that the truth demands. I have found a space to preserve freedom. We have an hour of silence every day, sharing with people from the Commission. The silence clarifies the difference between having will, that is the capacity of God, right and wrong, and having free will. When you go through the process of liberation from all emotions where we are trapped by fears, affections, and worries about what on the respect of us. From there we would come the prudence and courage to act, no matter what the cost. Mm -hmm. Finally, for me the Eucharist has always been a moment experience of grace, mercy, and freedom in Jesus. In the table, in the table of bread and wine. I have adapted to us the challenge possible to make. You have been destined for many to fall and others to rise. You will be a sign of contradiction so that the image of many hearts will be clarified and its word will penetrate in soul. Before participating in the truth coalition, I used to think that I had sufficient knowledge of the physical and emotional suffering of the victims and the drama of the perpetrators. Over the months, I realized my ignorance and learned how far I was from the magnitude of the trauma and how distant I was from compassion and real love. Entering into the human tribe of the world is descending into the heads of the victims and perpetrators. The emotional tragedy of several millions of survivors is bottomless. At any moment, those upset with the findings of the Commission may attack. Something these confrontations are respectful. Sometimes they are traumatic and unexpected. The lady who brought you on the street and insulted is you son of a bitch. The man who attacks you inside that inside an airplane, loud enough for the passenger to feel his indignation. The perfect college, 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 the perfect college of a photo, in which you are dressed as a guerrilla fighter with a machine gun in your hands, the radio program that repeats every day that the commission is unreliable. This allows us to understand that the conflicts have penetrated the whole of the fire, 
that we are part of the problem. You are entering the fragile reality of your family, <coughs> and you become part of your people, and you feel deeply that the neighbor brutally affected by your war of violence is that you, human, with emotions, fears, dreams, children, and hopes. Then one discovers how once how many it is affected, and how it is impossible to be ethical in one despising the one by the world's eye. It was only as the fridge in our world that I understood how affected <coughs> the animals were women and men, my people of the commission, to enter every day into this in an accompany, to be confronted internally and fed and externally, to try to understand and explain the anonymity and inexplicable evil, all in harmony, and with little time to attend to the cumulative impact that the suffering was producing in them. Today, today I recognize that from my place I did not offer sufficient support to these people who were so important in the process. They paid, in, they paid immense personal and family costs putting at least their lives and emotional health. And that's why I would like to pass to many other to this commission anywhere in the world. Is if out of love you decide to enter into the heads of the victims and perpetrators, take care of you. When power feels threatened by the drugs, it destroys the drug seekers. Power can be the state, the military, the paramilitary, the guerrillas, the politicians. At times, the Catholic Church has well for me a mandate that is persecutor of those who seek human truth. Those in power normally cover up their crimes against human beings. Official documents containing these crimes are toxic. In the battalions of Colombia, these documents were burned at the end of every year. And in some cases, those who reveal these truths are prosecuted as conspirators, enemies of the national security, or enemies of the revolution. I have personally experienced the violence of the power. One day, one day the top paramilitary commander selected me in person because I told the president the location of the paramilitary headquarters where they killed many peasants, a piece of information that the military had hidden from the president. Another day, I was kidnapped by heavy armed guerrillas who held a mock trial in the forest to condemn me to death. And while I was presenting my defense, every money in the courtroom was shot in liar. Lying. The violence of power was much more brutal with other two seekers. Alma Rosa, my friend and lover, was torn to pieces when she saw when she told the truth about the paramilitary alliance with the Corvette mayor of the town of Morales. Sergio Savaria, soul brother, Jesuit. Was murdered in front of the woman, farm shopping, for telling the truth about the violence against the poor farmers. Monsignor Giuliani, who presided the Truth Commission in Guatemala, was assassinated two weeks after delivering the Commission's findings. They are all these comments and our when blue seekers encountered the dilemma of telling the truth. Of, or remain in silence. Sometimes it has traumatic moments in which the authorities pray to the witnesses. And for this to say what the perpetrator want, as the criminals of the CIA brutally did with Maria del Carmen, survivor of the assassination of the Jesuit in El Salvador. However, the passion for the murder of brothers and sisters prevails. As it happened with Maria Carmen, 
Eu tive que ir com a minha família, do Chau Paulini, a Ischobe, a Ischobe, de sorte eu aqui, de fadas. How dare you? How dare you? This is the question that many to seekers in many places have asked. How dare you consider yourself human and your security and comfort without caring that next to you, in an interconnected planet, millions of children, women and men are destroyed by violence and war? This is not a question about the truth. The truth is already known. What is us is how, knowing the truth, we we'll still have the we still retain the way we do. It is the most uncomfortable question. It can be phrased in or performed in several ways. How they are to continue to produce atomic weapons capable of destroying millions of human beings and Daniel Bell's imagination and his brother Philip and their companions were well sent to jail. How dare you leaders of the real nations continue to destroy the planet with the pollution from the industries, from new industries? And the powerful mass media attack Greta Sanford's courage as radical and psychologically dead. How dare you Colombian soldiers murder our children and present their bodies as terrorists killed in combat? when you knew that they never participate in the war. And the man was singled out as liars and manipulated by the enemies of the nations. Now, the question has an ultimate dimension when we are Christians. How dare we call ourselves the witness of Jesus when we do not care about the wounded along the road to Jericho? We know why a few people who inspire by the gospel embody these questions in their lives. Martin Luther King left his community in Memphis to ask Americans how they are we, races, call ourselves a nation and democracy. And Martin Luther King was shot. Archbishop Oscar Robert was possessed by the question when he spoke in the with Frederick Lula and assassinated him. And from that moment on his sermons every Sunday, asked, How dare you kill my people? Romero was shot when he was celebrated in the Eucharist. And there are many, many other examples in Christian history. The conclusion is obvious. If we dare to call ourselves followers of Jesus, we must stand with the victims of human violence on the side of the road. And if we are being touched by compassion, and we never have time to be priority to the pain of our neighbors, please let us not talk about the God of Jesus. Because victims and perpetrators will go away from Jesus. And society will never understand who we are talking about when we talk about it. God, our Lord Jesus Christ. There is also the other part, the joy, the inner peace, the strength to continue, the experience, the experience of resurrection and progress from the life that comes out of death, from the victims, the survivors, from them we have received the sincerest expression of gratitude. Also, the trust and recognition of those responsible who have acknowledged their participation in world crimes because they appreciated people, welcomed, accompanied, and protected in the conversion. And the experience of what happens against all hope, the miracle of forgiveness, the army commander who comes to the mother of the young man he murdered and publicly tells how he committed the crime and asks for forgiveness. 
the black leader of the village where the bomb destroyed the shopping and the other hand in the comfort was an offer for kids to take a real of the condition that they that they laid up their arms. The guerrilla commanders who come to the town, they attacked many times and tell the community how they killed their love, their loved ones, and ask for forgiveness. And the community expresses pain and indignation and finally, finally agrees to grant forgiveness. This happened many, many times. There have been all kinds of recognition to the Truth Commission's work. Human rights, of course, this crisis, tributes in the Colombian courts, institutional, institutional congratulations by the United Nations Secretary of the Security Council, who have been received at the State Department by the United States Senators in the European Parliament in Madrid, Paris, Brussels, Rome, Mexico, Buenos Aires, including an honorary doctorate for the final for the final report. And the members of the commission are continually invited to conferences, radio and TV interviews, and speeches before different audiences. It is still exciting to receive expression of gratitude from women and men who come up, to, come up to us to express appreciation for the work of the Commission. Children and young people ask to take a picture. Many times we are running in the streets in the early morning routine. There is someone who has told me to say thank you. I have to say that this recognition gave me a bitter sweet taste because our task is not over. The fruit that has emerged from our effort is not prime. It has to pass through the discussion of ideas and the long road to reconciliation to make it season. Receiving rewards when you have not finished is a feeling of joy, but always missing with the satisfaction for all that remains to be done. The final report of the Committee of the Colombian Truth Commission is just one contribution to the never ending search for truth that allows us to rescue ourselves as human beings. Hence the title, There is Future if There is Truth. We hope that this contribution will be useful not only for Colombia, but also for other countries. We are encouraged to find that there is a growing number of young people everywhere. We are working for truth and peace among human beings and with nature. Young people who value cultural and ethnical differences and who are already building a better world for the children of the world. And the vision transcends national and cultural and religious borders. My visa was delayed at the US consulate in Bogota when I was about to travel to Boston. As far as I know, one official at the U.S. Consulate in Bogota felt the need to study my case in further detail and retain my passport. On the one, on the one hand, that delayed my dream of being at Boston College for a complete academic year. But it also shows that some look at our vision with suspicion. Thank you, King, Father Lee, and the strong intervention of Peter Martin. I got my passport back. And I was able to participate in Rome as a Castle professor at the dialogue between opposing political groups in Colombia to promote reconciliation and build the future. Pope Francis supported the discreet, discreet and profound dialogue hosted by the, by the Father General of the Legend. When I returned to Bogota from Rome, thanks to the effective intervention of Boston College, everyone at the USA was treated kindly. And my visa to enter the United States in a few hours was ready. 
So here I am. <laughs> Since 1980, I have been working for peace in Colombia in a way, in about a decade. I'm getting 80 in this year. In about one decade, my life will be over. For me, it is clear that I will not get to go and see the great peace, the great peace in Colombia. Not the world in a war. But I need not lose hope. Peter Cowell, a Qatar legend, from 16, 16, devoted every day of his life to the human dignity of the neighbors who were writing Cartagena to be sold in the market that were animals. While the Catholic city, full of churches, denied reality. Peter received the African survivors of the harm in Germany with deep respect. After 17 years in the West, Peter passed away. He could not get the church to rise up against slavery. But he never gave up hope. He knew that his life, total dedication, would inspire the change. And when Peter divided, in 1664, he said goodbye in peace to his African brothers. The seed of his life will be will bear fruit of all over the world. Let us not lose the Eh, yo quisiera saber eh, cómo, 
que hacen distinta esta Comisión de la Verdad comparada con el trabajo que ha hecho la Comisión y con la Comisión eh, con la eh, con la de la, la del M19 que, que hizo diferente que es lo que hace esta Comisión de la Verdad eh, distinta o, o, o cómo se ha apoyado también con el trabajo que hicieron las otras So my question is like, what it makes this truth commission like distinctive compared to uh, the work that the historical, um, historical, the commission. Yeah, I cannot remember the, the commission. The commission that was created for the peace agreement with AUC and the truth commission in 19. Oh, thank you for your questions. For your questions. Oh, that does happen at different places. First, as I responded first, first question, we have separated the judicial aspect from just the historical things. Secondly, we mobilize the whole country. We have 28 Holds of truth. In many, I would say, the most difficult areas in the country. And we were having a lot of conversation with the victims and the victims. We went to see them everywhere. And also in 24 different countries here in the United States, in Canada, in Spain, in Germany, in Italy, in Britain, in Latin American countries, in Colombia, Colombia, and Australia. And uh, we had a lot of conversation with the military, with the big businessmen and women, a lot of conversations with the paramilitary groups. And in a year, we were discussing with the paramilitary groups, and we received a lot of information from everywhere. So that makes a, a big difference. Comparison with the old truth commission in Colombia and even anywhere because it was the first time that that committee, that truth commission, separates <laughs> the judicial, <coughs> truth, the judicial, and just the historical and public ethic, ethics truth. Francisco, I'm so glad you could come back. It's good to see you again. What are some concrete things that people outside of Colombia can do to support this process? an effect on the problem of the drug trafficking, which is very strong in the country. We need the support in this issue. I mean, when I need the support, the reflection, I invite you, for instance, to work on the report of the Commission. It's very rich, because there you have a lot of information how to face what is going on in Colombia and how to be that the future. And also to pay a lot of attention on the recommendation of the Commission. Because for us, uh, this, is, this, is, this is really, uh, I have to be, to be honest, that we consider us still discussing the very things. This is for us the, the real 
Cleansing the heart and put in action in God. Okay. The bread runs in the doors, the bread will taste in the doors. So I pray for you and invite you to take the documents to bring this to the if, if you have to advise, let's say that another country in five years we have a food commission, what would be your experience? What are the things that you change or do different than you did for Colombia? Like, is, is there anything that you would uh, do in a different way? You know. The, the, the Argentinian Commission was the origin, is the origin of all the process of food commissions in the world. And it was a fantastic contribution to the violation of human rights done by the, the big public government. But today, the Commission has evolved to a more open condition, not only the violation of human rights, but also the historical context, the cultural problems, even uh, the environmental problems, the problem with the structure of the countries, the economic and political situation. And we try to, to be far more complex because only the judicial problem who are the party, who are the gift, who had the gift, who are the responsible, and especially the judicial truth, the judicial truth, don't give all the answers to people and don't create a reconciliation. It was very important for us to establish the courageous experience of the Argentinian people. So it was a great confrontation. Hi, thank you so much. Um, I'm wondering what you see as the role of grassroots and local organizations in working to disseminate the findings of the commission and also working to like uh, implement the findings because uh, as much as the commission has tried to remain neutral and hasn't had ties with big business or the Catholic Church, uh, I think there's an important role for grassroots organizations in this. I'm just wondering what you see as that as their responsibilities. Thank you. Thank you for your question. No, the, 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 the importance of people organization is are very, very necessary in this process. Usually, questions come from the media, the profound questions, the, the, the real problems, and we have to listen to them. Probably they don't have the solutions, and this is, this is the importance of the university, that the questions have to come from them, not from books, not from the discussion of academics, but from them. They are suffering the situation, they are living in situations, and uh, they are just to get from us. They are to, to take them into consideration and to help them. You have to, to broaden your perspective because they are, you know, they are close to the situation, they are suffering in the daily, daily confrontations. Uh, but without the question coming from them and the suffering of men and the it is possible for us to, to, to go forward. On that note,